Thanks for tuning in to this special Tyson Fury vs Vladimir Kitschko Baylor TV special Boxing Breakdown Prediction video Don't forget to rate, subscribe, leave your comments Retweet and share I really appreciate that, thank you So, this is it The prediction Haven't done the prediction I wait until week of the fight not because I had doubts or had any concerns, but I just wanted to be sure this fight is actually going to go ahead. Hey, it could still get cancelled while Fury's in Germany, but unlikely, I think the fight will go ahead. So, let's start by saying Vladimir Klitschko is a great champion. He has made 16, 17 defences of the World Heavyweight Championship. He has got... One of the best jabs in world boxing. A right hand that can render you unconscious at any moment. But his footwork is fantastic for such a big man. His footwork is so agile and so light to move around the ring. I think it's very good. And his, his ability to judge distance and timing is phenomenal. Um, and he has made significant adjustments since being knocked out back in the day by Lamont Brewster. And um, Corey Sanders and Ross Purity. A credit to Emmanuel Stewart and the coaches around Emmanuel Stewart to remodel and make Vladimir the champion that he is today. And he's a very experienced champion. But there's some things about Vladimir Klitschko which still, to me, um, his lack of of ability to fight on the inside which makes up for him holding and grabbing and leaning on opponents he does do that it's strategic when he leans on opponents Lewis did it as well lean on opponents much smaller than you sap the energy from their legs tire them out quicker so second half of the fight where their legs and stamina is going you can get on top of them somebody like Brian Jennings who's extremely fit and uh, is a workaholic and always in the gym you know, they, they stick around for 12 rounds because they're extremely fit. Otherwise, they'd be in a lot of trouble. Having said all that, um, Vladimir is considered to be boring at times because he's very safety first. But the reason why safety first is because of those experiences of being knocked out previously. That's the reason why safety first. And um, the, re the other reason why he's still world heavyweight champion today is that he doesn't listen to... Most of the rubbish that is spoken across on social media by so-called uh, boxing experts. If Vladimir Klitschko were to listen to a lot of these people that would want him to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, blow for blow every fight, Vladimir Klitschko would be world champion today. Vladimir Klitschko is an excellent boxer and I want to make that very clear. Um, I did not enjoy his performance against Povetkin. But I was very excited by his performance against um, Pulev. Although I backed Pulev to beat Klitschko that night. I think I thought Pulev was was able to exploit weaknesses. And from the very first round, he threw the left jab. But of course, he stuck around, got too greedy too soon and walked on some big shots. And after he got his legs stiffened in the first round, Pulev didn't know it how to use any form of footwork whatsoever, stood in front of Vladimir, and of course the rest is history. The way Vladimir finished Pulev off was quite destructive with the left hook, the leaping left hook. Pulev had no response to it. Um, then the Jennings fight, you know, again, there are moments where I saw Jennings back Vladimir up, um, where he went to Vladimir's body, and the same rabbit headlights look came from Vladimir, and he went back to the corner, he went to Jonathan Banks, and Banks said to him, look, all you need to do is box this guy. And, you know, if Banks is having to tell Vladimir what to do against a guy who only had 19 fights as a pro, I think only 10 amateur bouts, you know, I'm still not convinced about Jonathan Banks as the trainer for Vladimir Klitschko in a difficult fight. I still have question marks about that. OK, on the flip side, Tyson Fury. Yes, fights against Derek Chisora. The first fight, getting off the canvas against 
um, it's pie check and getting off the canvas against um, Cunningham. His first fight against McDermott. Um, the second fight was a tough fight as well for him. Uh, I think Fury, through the years since being under Peter Fury, has developed. He's evolved as a fighter. I myself have been guilty of the whole, he got dropped by Steve Cunningham. That was many moons ago. The two fallout fights with um, David Hay were the, the fights we would have found a lot more by Fury. Never happened. We now have the Klitschko fight. Now, this is my personal opinion based on um, talking to Tyson Fury on a number of occasions, talking to Peter Fury and feeling almost like a family member. It's not so much the conversation that we have that the public hears, those conversations behind closed doors that, you know, I give credit to the whole Fury family. I found them always very respectful and um, very likable and I consider them family. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to be biased in my opinions. I will say as it is, as Peter Fury would say, let's get something categorically clear here. If one of those right hands trigger... On Tyson Fury's chin and he decides to clown around like he did against Cunningham or against Pycheck, he will be looking up at Klitschko and I doubt very much he'll be getting up because if he's going to get hit flush like he did like Cunningham or he did like uh, a Pycheck while clowning around at mid-range, good night. I will also say this, if I see Vladimir Klitschko getting on his toes and bouncing around the ring it rounds four and five if he's still around um i'd be also concerned then as well because that means vladimir once vladimir starts getting on his toes and bouncing around that's vladimir that's the vladimir jig evander holyfield had that same jig as well don't let vladimir get into that jig that means he's in rhythm that means the the he he's fully he's got his tail up and he knows what he's up to he knows what he's going to be doing so those are things that I don't really want to be seeing this fight in terms of if you're a Tyson Fury fan, I want Tyson Fury to win this fight. Okay, so the keys to victories for the fight. Well, keys to victory for Vladimir Klitschko, don't let Tyson Fury get on top of him. I think Vladimir Klitschko's got to hit Fury early, hurt Fury early, and let Fury know that this is a totally different proposition to what he may have come into. Having, um, he's got to hurt Tyson early. And the one thing I think we're going to see in this fight, the straight right hand, I think is key for Vladimir Klitschko. That straight right hand, regardless if Klitschko goes, um, no, Tyson goes southpaw or orthodox. There's an expression we have in cricket. You'll have to mind me for a, sec for a second. Whether you're left-handed or right-handed, this expression, you've got three, You've got three stumps to hit, you've got three poles to hit, the left pole, the right pole, and the pole in the middle as you're bowling with your ball. Now, for those who are in America that understand, basically, whether you're left-handed or right-handed with a bat in your hand, the middle stump always remains the same way. As much as I convert that to boxing, the right hand is the perfect answer to a southpaw. And also, a great antidote to keep somebody quiet, the right hand by the left jab. Whether Fury goes orthodox or southpaw, while he's going between orthodox and southpaw, the right hand, while he's making the change from southpaw to orthodox, is what Klitschko can employ. So that's dangerous. When he shifts from southpaw to orthodox, he's got to ensure that he's not in a range for Klitschko to nail him with a right hand. You can do that stuff at lower levels. If you get nailed at that level, you know, it could be curtains. The other thing is concentration for Fury. He has tended in fights to switch off. Of recent times, the Hamer fight, the Chisora fight, Fury has boxed. For me, it looks under orders. He's boxed under orders. He's not, even, even if you look at the Abel fight, there's one moment where you see Abel, he's just, busy going along with Abel, next minute he just switches into another gate and drops Abel. Fury is a big puncher, let that be known, Fury is a very big puncher. You say, oh, well, you took eight rounds to get rid of Cunningham, or nine rounds to get rid of Cunningham. Okay, fine, fair enough. 
but he's a big puncher. And Klitschko's chin is not the greatest. If you're getting rocked by a jab by Kubrat Pulev, you know, think to yourself, Fury's got a longer range than Kubrat Pulev and a longer range than Bryant Jennings. And Jennings was able to land. Jennings was able to get inside. Jennings was able to land body shots. So whatever Jennings could do, imagine Tyson Fury can do, and he's much bigger. So just bear those things in mind. Um, Fury, for me, I believe, this is my wholehearted opinion, and having spoken to Tyson Fury, he's a tactical genius. You haven't seen it yet, but this man is a tactical genius. Um, I've questioned Fury before, and let me put it this way, I said to Fury to his face, I didn't think he'd be able to deal with Dexter's overhand right. Having seen the overhand right drop him uh, by Cunningham and dropping by um, Pajic. And I was they, uh, at that Fury's always been vulnerable at mid range. So what does he do? He turns southpaw, nullifies the right hand of Derek Chisora, takes his best weapon away from him, and basically gives Chisora a boxing lesson. And I believe he could have stopped Chisora any time he wanted to in that fight against, um, uh, in the second fight against Chisora. Physically, got a lot bigger and a lot stronger than he was the first fight when he fought with Chisora. So a lot of people say, which has already come with the, the ambition, Fury shut him down completely. So, and against Christian Hammer as well, it wasn't much of a fight for me. Uh, Fury, once again, has mastered fighting the small guys. Now, the fact he hasn't fought big guys, well, that's one of two things. I think one is a good thing. Vladimir hasn't got much tape to go on as to how Fury's going to set up against how he fights against big guys. That's a positive. The negative is, well, look, hey, we've not seen you fight against a big guy, so we don't know how you'll do against a big guy. But we take Peter Fury's word for it, Tyson fights better against bigger men. Well, they say the same thing was Klitschko. The difference is we've seen Klitschko fight against bigger men, whether it be Tony Thompson, whether it be, um, what's his name, uh, uh, Marius Vack. Uh, those are two big guys there. But what I will tell you this, in Tony Thompson and Myers back, they don't have the versatility that Tyson Fury has. Um, they won't come with the same sort of balls that Tyson Fury have, and um, they don't have. Um, uh, I don't think they've got the boxing IQ that Fury has either. Now I know a lot of people look at Fury for his personality, but personality is not boxing. What a person does to sell a fight is different to what he does when he gets in the ring. And Fury's been knocked down and he's got out. Now, let's get on to why the key to fight for Fury. For Fury, he's got to use his jab. He's got to be first with a jab. Listen, I don't care what anybody tells me here. A jabber does not like another jabber jabbing at them. Okay? You've got to disrupt Klitschko's rhythm. You've got to use the jab early and put the right hand in it within the first 30 seconds to a minute. You've got to hit Klitschko hurt him and bring my reminders of what he what happened to him against Corey Sanders and against uh, Lamont Brewster. You've got to hit him and hurt him early. The other thing is, you've got to get Klitschko against the ropes. Get Klitschko against the ropes and fight with him on the inside. Klitschko cannot fight on the inside because he's got no inside game, hence why he's always holding all the time. Fury's the better inside fighter. He throws excellent uppercuts and works very well to the body. Fury must not, must not, any circumstances fight this guy mid range. Mid range. Fury's got to be either completely in or he's got to be completely out. If you look at the time Fury's been knocked down in his career, it's when he's been at mid range. Mid range also where he drops his hands. Mid range where he has in the in the past um, lost concentration. Boom, got caught. Look at the shots he's been knocked down with or the shots he's been hurt with. Even with a Derek Chisora first fight, mid range. Stood too long in the area where he was neither in nor out. He doesn't know how to box when he's, when he's mid-range. And that's where he gets hurt. He may have progressed as a fighter. But, you know, when you move to the highest levels, you know, you, you know, the, the element of mistake making is um, less. You can't afford to make those mistakes. Now, the other thing that I keep hearing people saying, and I think it's quite rude. I keep hearing people saying... Especially the Sky team. Vladimir Klitschko's count has been very professional. 
So what are you suggesting? That Peter Fury and Tyson Fury have been unprofessional and amateur? People talk some crap sometimes, some real rubbish. So what are you saying? They're not an am they're an amateur setup. What? What makes them an amateur setup? Don't get it. So both camps have trained as professional as possible. Um, the other thing, experience. Now I'm going to say something about experience here. You've got to look at Klitschko, not if he's experienced fighting against David Hay, or against Mormick, or against Kubrat Pulev, or against Marius Vak, or against Tony Thompson, because he's never faced someone like Tyson Fury. So it's a new experience. Yes, he's fought a guy that's big. Yes, he's fought a guy that's tall. But he doesn't fought a guy with the range that Fury's got, a much longer range than any of the guys he's fought. Uh, a guy that's got the range, unbeaten, full of hunger and desire. Somebody who's got a culture, which is the, the gypsy background he's coming from, which has got a fighting culture. So there's a lot of um, pride at stake there, much more so than a Tony Thompson or, or Marius Vack. They get beat, they go home, that's it. This guy's got look at his people, and his people will be looking to him for inspiration and want to see Tyson go down, you know, fighting. So Tyson's not going to be going in there and, and, and jibber-jabbering as he goes. So that's another thing. And there's one other thing. I want people to understand. Tyson is a man of his word. Not whether whether it be outside the ring or inside the ring. He's a man of his word. And if he tells you this is going to be easy to fight. I actually believe him. I actually believe him. And I actually believe that this fight is going to end inside the distance. I actually think this fight will finish inside the first five or six rounds. I remember talking to Tyson just the week as the fight was announced. And he said to me, you know something? If I have to go to Germany, then I have to look for the knockout. If it were in England, I'd fight one way. But I have it, I'm going to have to cut my comfort zone to beat this guy. He's got it all in line. This is, this is, he knows, Tyson Fury knows. He knows that um, because he's a controversial character, he's not a yes man. He doesn't do things politically correct. He may never get a world title shot again. So he's got to take it with both arms and both legs. And I think this fight wins inside the distance for Fury. I really do. But there are some things he cannot afford to do. And like I've said before, staying mid-range, he's got to be either in or either out, either completely in or completely out with, with, with Vladimir Klitschko. Got to let his hands go. He's got to... He's got to hit Vladimir hard early within the first 10 to 15 seconds. I expect this fight to actually be a war. I expect this to be Vladimir Klitschko's most exciting fight of his career. I really do. And the fact that he's got Vitaly Klitschko in as well um, makes me suspect that he's taking this fight even more seriously than ever. So those are my thoughts on this fight. I'm expecting Fury to win this fight inside the distance because I tell you why. In all of this, we're yet to see the best of Tyson Fury. Vladimir Klitschko is in decline. I don't care what anybody tells me. Vladimir Klitschko, you cannot at 40 be the peak of your powers. It's got to be in decline. Got to be in decline. And I think that um, nobody's been able to exploit those weaknesses to its full. Kubrat Pulev started something. Bright Jennings started something. But I think that Fury is going to get on top in the position because of the longer reach and will be able to capitalise. And you know what? I think also that people raise their game to the next level. And there's not much evidence on YouTube of a man of fury fighting big men so he hasn't fought big men for a long time so really you can't really judge how good this guy is going to be but i'm judging for the fact he's going to be good and then some big occasion big fight big time fighter i think fury is I think he rises to the occasion i think he shocks vladimir klitschko i think he stops vladimir klitschko every punch has got to be a hurtful punch no messing around. I don't think he'll mess around. I think he'll get down to business straight away. And he'll box the orders under Peter Fury's orders, I think. But um, expect to see some fireworks. Expect to see Fury land. 
hurt Vladimir Klitschko and get him out of there. And we know that once Vladimir gets hurt, he doesn't have the greatest powers of recuperation. So that's my thoughts. Don't expect everyone to like it. A lot of people won't like it because of what Fury says outside the ring. They want to see him get a beating. But I don't think that what Fury says outside the ring has got anything to do with his boxing ability. So, and if you disagree with me, explain to me. I've broken, I've taken the time to break down why I believe one man's going to win and one man's going to lose. I think the reason why Vladimir Klitschko lo loses, and I've been saying it for years, you need someone who's got a dog in them. I thought uh, Bryant Jennings had a dog in him, and I thought that Kubrat Pudliff had a dog in him. But in both occasions, they, again, lack something, that little extra. I think Tyson Fury's got that in size and boxing ability and willingness to put it all on the line. And that, I suspect, is going to take him over the edge. Those are my thoughts. Thank you. Roll on November the 28th and the new heavyweight champion of the world.